I'm reintroducing myself. My name is Timios Mitsiadis. I'm working in the University of Zurich together with ATH. And uh, I'm uh, um, in the Institute of Oral Biology, touching all the fields that uh, have to do with uh, biology of the mouth. Uh, so what's the latest discussions you're having around here? Uh, discussions we have not much because just uh, right now the the meeting is starting but um, uh, we have some new developments let's say in the field uh, that I can introduce to you um, one uh, big development the last uh, three four years it is uh, uh, formation of uh, dental tissues uh, on chip it is this uh, tooth on chip that we call so we can uh, recapitulate all physiology and pathology uh, of the tooth in a very small area and to analyze and we can use it for diagnostic reasons as well. So it is helping for the regeneration of the tissues. Are you uh, creating synthetic teeth? What is yeah, it is not synthetic about? really. It is uh, first of all about the living tissue. Uh, it is about the dental pulp. It is the inside of the of the tooth. Uh, this uh, contains a lot of uh, cells, a diversity of cells that can be from uh, fibroblasts to stem cells, uh, to endothelial cells, to neuronal cells, to immune cells, uh, and to even epithelial cells. We have done the. Um, single cell RNA analysis sequencing last year. This paper has been published and we have analyzed uh, the different cell populations in the genomic level uh, of the whole human tooth. Uh, this uh, has been done for the dental pulp and it has been done for the tissue that is surrounding the tooth, that is the periodontal part. Uh, so these uh, two cell populations are important because they are keeping alive the tooth. So how do, does your research become something that is used in the, in the world? Uh, this is, is it actually used already? Uh, no, it's not used. Uh, they, they start uh, uh, some people to create organ. When you say organ on chip, uh, most of the um, companies or uh, universities that uh, there are not many that uh, they are in America mostly, in Harvard. So they try to recreate the liver, the, the pancreas, or they can uh, recreate the brain or the heart. Are tissues of uh, prime importance, as uh, it is uh, well understood. And uh, they are trying, first of all, to analyze this in order to see how they can do, how they can deal uh, with pharmaceutical substances uh, or to make some prognostic in case of Alzheimer, let's say, for the brain. And we are trying, we are uh, one of the first group in the world to try to make this uh, on uh, cre recreating uh, the, the tissue of the, of the tooth. So, if I can advance a little bit, uh, this, this uh, organ on chips, that we can have different chips of different organs, uh, we can uh, uh, put all together uh, through microfluidic devices and to communicate, to allow to communicate between them. So we can connect the tooth organ with the liver, with the heart, with the brain, uh, with the articulations, and so on. Like that, if for instance, we have an inflammation, a bacterial inflammation, uh, in one of the organs, we can go to see what is happening, how this bacteria from one organ, they can influence the physiology of another organ. And for teeth, it is well known from, uh, from the past that when you have severe cases of inflammation of teeth, you can have pericarditis, you can have arthritis, and you, you have a lot of uh, other manifestations in the body. Uh, this is the time that we can prove, because this was uh, something that we can observe, but we could not analyze deeply. But now with this new technology, we can go to analyze and we can see what are the effects uh, in the other organs. It sounds a little bit like reflexology, where uh, you have some, some uh, nerve endings in the yeah, teeth that are connected yeah, with the rest of the yeah, body. Yeah, 
and I, I will uh, I will tell you what we figure out in this. That means when you are making, for instance, in the teeth, one hole, you are going to the dentist, the dentist is making a hole. You have a reaction of the tissue, of the dental tissue, of the pulp, because you have nerves, and you have vessels. Immediately this reaction is going to, to the brain, uh, and after, because in the brain you have this trigeminal ganglion, these faces from the trigeminal ganglion, is projecting to all other tissues around the tooth. So it's not just the tooth, you can have the, uh, the other, the eye, you can have the salivary glands, you can have the ear, and so on. And of course, can affect other organs through all this uh, stimulation of a neuron from the tooth. So yeah, it is something like that as well. So when you have a problem with health in the future, you just go get a special Bluetooth and it uh, will fix you, or what? No, it's not a Bluetooth, really. This uh, Bluetooth is just for, uh, uh, let's say, it's, uh, it's nothing to do with science fiction here. It is really true. It is really, you try to figure out what is happening in the tissues, because you have human tissues inside. Uh, you can uh, try to see what medication is doing. And I will take an example here. For instance, you have uh, leukemia of small kids that are five years old. And this leukemia, of course, you are given drugs in order to uh, heal this disease. So what is happening then? Uh, when you are given these drugs, you can see that the hairs are lost, the hairs of the kids. The same you can see when uh, women that uh, they have uh, these uh, breast cancers, they are taking this chemotherapy and uh, uh, the, the hairs are lost. Why they are lost? Because these uh, drugs, they are affecting the stem cell population. Because hairs, they have stem cells, that's why they are grown continuously. But it's not affecting just the stem cell populations, they can affect as well the teeth. For instance, the, the stem cells that are existing in the teeth in five years old. So you can have deteriorating teeth by the administration of these uh, chemo, uh, chemo chemicals that you are giving for cancer that are not really rainbows for the social security. And this is a pity because it is not something that is responsible for the patient. But this there is nothing yet there to prove that you know this, these drugs they are affecting. And I don't know many articles or researchers they are focusing towards this area in order to see how these drugs they are affecting other healthy tissues in the body. Uh, are you able to uh, develop some kind of tooth and the gum area or something for people who have problems that need to have something completely different? Or yeah. is that not the, the application here? No, you, you can have all sorts of applications. Uh, the technology now has advanced a lot. We know a lot about uh, stem cell and plasticity of this. Uh, we know about innervation and vascularization of these tissues. And uh, we can have this uh, printing technology that can help uh, enormously. So this all we can do, but we need for this a, a lot of money. And of course, we have to be focused. It is not just one laboratory or two in the world that they can achieve these things. You have to have a coordinated action uh, that is direct and let's say in case that we are in Europe from European community uh, to throw money inside in such big projects in order to, to, to go further uh, with uh, these uh, new developments. Are you like doing something cutting edge in this field? You're like uh, researching stuff that nobody's done before? Yeah, all this that I'm speaking about is cutting edge. It's nobody that is doing. Uh, we're doing this and we have uh, this uh, appearing in original publications. Actually, just to, to tell you uh, how original it is, I will tell you what we published in, the, uh, in the, just the near past. Uh, uh, we recreate by taking uh, um, human dental uh, uh, stem cells. Uh, we replace the, the mammary uh, stem cells and uh, we place in this position the dental and after the mice, they develop uh, true mammary glands uh, with uh, the dental origin. And it is not just the, the mammary gland as, as the uh, tissue, but they have done as well milk. They were milk producing. So I don't know the quality of the milk, of the milk tooth uh, in comparison with the mammary gland, uh, but uh, 
for sure we could replace. So this is something original that nobody has done it. And we saw that they have a big plasticity and we can use maybe for diseases, uh, if you have a cancer um, in, in the breast, that maybe you can use uh, stem cells from another organ in order to, to replace the, the damaged uh, tissue in the, in the breast. Uh, this you can imagine for any sort of organ, yeah. How do you uh, define priorities, uh, like what you really want to, to achieve or bring to, to do. market? First, yeah. and uh, who decides this? Yeah, th this is in any case, it is uh, directed, I believe, uh, by, by the country always, uh, what they want to have because they are financing and you have to, to go to get these competitive grants. Uh, if not, you are getting nothing. Uh, and uh, you have uh, as well the European funds that are directed. You have a period that they were throwing a lot of money for stem cell. After you have another period, they were throwing a lot of money for nanotechnology. And uh, you have all these new developments that are happening that they try really to promote. So it is a kind of guidance, let's say, uh, from the top. Uh, that uh, they are trying to, to see what are in the society they need. If we have a cancer, in France I know that uh, when it was uh, Sirac, uh, uh, he threw a lot of money to make uh, the research on cancer. Um, I don't know if it was very successful or not, uh, but uh, yeah, it is something like that, politically driven. Uh, if not, you cannot make science in our days uh, just for your fun. Uh, you have fun uh, doing science, but uh, in, the, in the limits of uh, this that uh, the public is waiting from you because we're waiting some products, as you said, and uh, these products has to help uh, the humanity. Is there sometimes a government who says, here's a billion dollars, but I want a product in like two years? Yeah, you have this. Uh, there is, um, uh, of course, everybody knows that you cannot have it in two years, but uh, you can have uh, uh, through trials and uh, first of all you have to, to analyze this product in, uh, in conditions uh, uh, that are not uh, in living uh, uh, animals. After you have to have a sort of small animals or big size animals and by the end you are going to humans that you are going to make uh, uh, trials but uh, in three levels let's say. You have phases it is until phase one, phase two and phase three in order to go to, to commercialize and uh, to, to be applicable. Some people skip the phases. Uh, yeah, this is not so good uh, and uh, we had uh, some... Uh, some countries maybe want to skip them. Yeah, but it's, it's, not, uh, it's not... Yeah, maybe I, I understand this because there is maybe need to, to make our money. Eager, eager yeah. to see this. Yeah, but, but this can happen, you know, that means uh, we had... Okay, I'll give you an example. Uh, what was the example? The example it is about uh, uh, this COVID. And you have uh, this kind of vaccines that they have been created very in the very quick time. So it was not so much time in order to, to have these trials. And this delay, if we have these trials from before, it will be more secure about these vaccinations and so on. So this that happened now, we have created this and the people uh, the society was anxious if the results are really true or really we were the experimental models. So it's something like that. We have really not to, to push. We have really to take all, all our time. And you know, I'm living in Switzerland, and Swiss people, they are taking their time for reflection and everything, because they like to have something good and solid by the end. So this as well, and uh, yeah, I, I prefer to, to have really uh, good uh, arguments and solidify the, the results. Uh, in Switzerland, we say there's no fire in the lake. Uh, there is a fire in the lake, as uh, deep air, they say, smoke on the water, because this happened in Motre, and they wrote this song there. Um, so, yes, there is fire in the lake sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, what do you think is the most fascinating topic uh, at this conference? Uh, fascinating topics for me it is uh, this um, uh, photonics electronics because it is a, a new source of energy that uh, start to be explored a lot and it is a, a new direction that uh, we are going right now it will be nice really to know what this uh, light is doing as well to the uh, cells what they are doing how they are affecting uh, our psychology because we know that light is very important 
and uh, people in the north, when they have uh, this black uh, or uh, dark weather, uh, they are completely depressed. So means that it is very important, but maybe we are not doing so much of uh, experimental, uh, experimental uh, work there. And uh, you like coming uh, to the nanotechnology conference? I adore it. Friends and I adore it. You know, it is as you, you know, it is the same for me. The, because you are meeting people, uh, it's a relaxed atmosphere, uh, you see all the new technologies, how they are advancing. Uh, it is very friendly because you can go out after, you have uh, dinners uh, that everybody is intermingling. You have social uh, dances and uh, uh, even when you are drinking uh, some uh, some kind of uh, uh, Greek spirits, let's say, Metaxa, me metaxa or uh, maybe other. So you, you are in a kind of euphoria. So yes, of course, everybody would like to be in euphoria, no? That's how you get new ideas. Exactly. This, this told me my, my professor, my tutor, when I was studying my PhD, and he saw me drinking a small uh, uh, ouzo, and he told me, don't worry, you can continue because ideas are coming like that. <laughs> <laughs> and this is also a place to maybe start new projects. Yeah, it is. of course, projects uh, you can have, you know, if, if you are aware of, about everything and you are informed of, and you are, have the good question, let's say, because you have to have a question, not to do for doing. Uh, if you have a question, I believe in our days, uh, you can have thousands of solutions. Uh, you have this technology that you can tackle the, the, the same problem from different mm -hmm. ways. And uh, um, the problem is not a Ronaldo that is running out of you and you cannot catch. You know, we can catch everybody. And it's, uh, it's really this is the, the good uh, thing uh, of our times and of the new generation of scientists that are going to come, uh, that they have in their uh, feet uh, the tools of, for doing everything. So I like those uh, electronic toothbrushes and those uh, 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 kind of like water Pressure Water kind of thing. Yes. And uh, I wonder, can you get like a smart tooth in the future? And you yeah, you with can. Some kind of machine. No, and yeah. then if you need more vitamins or if you need more some medicine or something, uh, it goes through the tooth. Yeah, it is. It is not the, uh, the vitamin and so on. Yeah, you can create this instead of uh, to abolish, let's say, the toothbrush, electric or the manual one, uh, and to abolish all these tooth uh, pastes and so on. Uh, maybe you can do something with the photonics or this new material, uh, graphene or whatever they have. Uh, you can place it maybe during the night as they are doing for orthodontic treatment uh, for people. Uh, and uh, you can have it and after you have uh, the microbial uh, uh, modification in the mouth and you have not any reason after to brush the teeth because it's already clean. So it's something like that that I can imagine in the future. So you can have a graphene. Yeah, why mouth, not? I don't know. Machine. I'm not. I'm not a specialist on, <laughs> on the material now, but I believe yeah, you can have it. Yeah. I, uh, this strange couple of years yes. happened, and some people say that there was nanotechnology in some of the vaccines and everything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you think people are talking a lot about this at the conference? Uh, they are talking. Actually, I heard, uh, I was reading interviews with uh, Stereos because he developed some uh, uh, sort of uh, mask for briefing and so on, that they have this kind of uh, uh, utility, the nanotechnology. And of course, the, fortunately, the nanotechnology and the new technology for this has uh, advanced the, the genetics and so on. They were so advanced because you saw we were producing bacteria, uh, 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 vaccines, that uh, before we were need to have it in three years' time or four or five. Uh, so this was very quick. And uh, this quick, uh, it, we saved possibly a lot of millions of lives. I believe that uh, uh, technology really help us. And this is the good thing of science, that we can say, okay, we can go. Of course, science has to be uh, dealt by people that are scientific, not by politicians alone. No, you have really to, to give uh, solid arguments and not to use it for any political uh, decision uh, going against. So it is very dangerous. This. But I believe uh, we, we had a, a good balance uh, during this uh, one or one year and a half. Uh, and uh, uh, the situation has been resolved uh, the, the best way. Hopefully we are by the end now. No? 
And don't you think sometimes the solution is in very old medicine? And sometimes there's no, maybe it's better than doing some of the new, crazy new stuff. Yeah, I believe that you have to use both. For instance, I will take an example. No, you have um, the X-ray. Uh, they invented X-ray more than a hundred years ago, even more. Uh, and uh, you have new developers now that you can have uh, imaging systems that are very complex and uh, these are adding more value and you can go in more details and so on, but nobody has suppressed yet X-ray. Similar for this old medicine that you say, or the medicine of my grandmother, because she had this empirical medicine that uh, people that were doing without uh, dealing with the doctors, still were Generally. keeping this, were drinking tea, still, or we say, okay, we have a problem, something, uh, take this and take that. So we are following this, and of course we, we are using uh, all these uh, new advances from uh, medical uh, medicine and uh, whatever is, is making. No. And you have a lot of students? Uh, students, I have a lot. Uh, uh, it is fortunately uh, and unfortunately, I don't know, because uh, it is a big responsibility, first of all, to have. We have a lot of master students uh, that uh, they are trying to give their best. And uh, yeah, that means we have the, the first prize from the university three times already. And uh, we have uh, just recently in, uh, in uh, Prague was a meeting uh, uh, specific on tooth and we have one of the uh, PhD candidates took the first prize there. So yeah, we have students, but uh, they are doing well and I'm happy for them. That means for me, I'm, I'm the most happy person in earth if my students are doing well. Does it happen that the students have crazy ideas? I'm not gonna say crazy, but like very advanced. And uh, they want to, they're very ambitious, want to do something, and then uh, you help them do it, or do you help them I, I tell know you, what the limits are? Yeah, I tell you how it is. You know, you are, when somebody is, is gone, because he cannot do whatever he likes, first of all, because all this, it is, we are paying money to them, and uh, all this money are coming from grants. So the student has to take a project that is according to the grant. Once you are given this, Personally, this I'm doing, I'm leaving to, to read uh, for one month and uh, to, to instruct uh, the, uh, about this topic. And after, I'm asking what is making, turning on, uh, which of all this he, he likes to do. Because if he likes or she likes something uh, more, it is obvious that the result will be much better because it's going to work with more enthusiasm, it is uh, in the heart, the topic. Uh, of course, there is this tendency uh, to open up like that with ideas. Yeah, I'm reading this article and I'm bringing this idea. It's a kind of ventalia, no, as the Spanish ventalia. Uh, but this, as well, the, me or the, the most, uh, let's say, the PIs, uh, the more experienced people, were there to close and to drive really in the, in the target because you have to follow always to, to have the target. You have not to lose. Uh, uh, your vision from where started from the beginning. And this is the most important part to understand for a student that has to work towards one target and that's all. Of course, we are not abolishing uh, smart ideas. If we say, we're, we say, give a try, see what is happening and so on. It's not really to, it's, you have to, to, to leave the student to feel free as well to do his several things because it's a, uh, is creating his personality like that. Uh, you, they want, you want them to have the biggest impact. And of course. By do, having the biggest impact, sometimes you have to be focused. Yeah, the, the impact is coming, for instance, if you have a problem that is the COVID, you cannot look about tetanus, no? You have to look on COVID. And uh, this, you know, uh, they have to be pragmatic, realistic, and to go towards this, uh, this end. And uh, actually, I can tell you this, when I was in Yale, I was in Yale for uh, some period as postdoc, and there was a very rich lab of Spiros Artavanis Tsakonas, and they had a lot of money. And uh, I was asking, what, why you are doing this experiment, you are spending so much money? Because they were spending a lot of money, that me, I was coming from uh, more modest labs in money from France that they have not... And in France, I adopt this Cartesian logic, that means, there is a fly, one fly on the wall. 
you know that there is. So you have to focus to see where is the fly. After in France, they give you a gun with one bullet. And you have really to, to take the target. And if you are able, you have really to kill this fly that is in the wall with this one bullet. In America, this that I saw, you know that there is a fly in the, in the wall. You don't know where it is. So you are going in mid-rages and you are shooting to all wall and you say, okay, the wall is not existing anymore. Hopefully the fly as well. So it, it was something like that for me. So you have to be always focused in what is the question and this is going to give you the highest impact. And for this, you don't need so much money if you are really thinking carefully. So can you apply the French fly gun method to the Americans? Yes, of course, and uh, the Americans, they are applying, but uh, you know, in some very rich labs that uh, they lost the sense of money and so on, uh, yeah, they say we have it, why not to do? Uh, similar in Switzerland, but in Switzerland you have uh, uh, a control that means uh, um, they are not allowed you to make uh, this kind of extravagances, no? Sometimes when I look at the Americans and the budgets and the profits, yeah. it's so huge. But sometimes I wonder to get scientific results and to get products that really change the world, maybe you don't need that much that many billions yeah you don't po possibly you don't need so many millions and so on it is a question really of balance always uh, i will tell you what is happening in america you can be very successful you know and the limit is the sky after uh, this is true but you have the opposite it's the but if you are unsuccessful in america you can go to sleep under a bridge this is america no airbags you are going to Switzerland, it's a completely different country. There they give you money to make your dream a reality, but you have two airbags. One airbag on top, so it's not sky your limit, and one airbag down, so you are no, never going to be left alone if you are failing in some project. So you, you are in something between. So, Maybe it's a cruelty in America, but you can see much more successful uh, people there because, uh, okay, there is the sky. Uh, in Switzerland, you see, but it's a collective effort of very big brains, uh, but they cannot reach as, as fast and easy as in America, uh, this, uh, to, to, to get a lot of money of uh, some invention and so on. Can you make a bridge? Take the American money, put it in Switzerland, and then everything is good. And you will be good for Switzerland, yes. <laughs> of course, I love this idea. <laughs> oh, just the, the Swiss, if they use their money more smartly, yeah, they could, the, the, they they could dominate the world. Yeah, they but could like, bring solutions that really help billions of people. Yeah, I, I believe that they don't want to dominate the world. The Swiss people, they are very peaceful and they, they like to live in, in Switzerland. But they like to live a comfortable life as well, and this is given the, the uh, advantage of living comfortable life, but by having everybody allowing to, to have uh, this, uh, this sort of life that uh, some other, in some other countries, as in Greece right now or in Italy, you know, you have uh, some people that they will dream of this life, no? So what's the bridge between Greece and Switzerland, for example? Um, How would you compare the systems? Uh, in Greece is completely different. It, uh, Greece is not a, a, it's a poor country, Greece. Okay, it is uh, very rich in, uh, in resources. Uh, you have, uh, okay, the sun, that is, you have the, the water, and uh, you have all these products by nature that are, uh, are functioning uh, uh, really perfectly. Uh, but uh, um, industry is not existing in Greece in the same way. We cannot compare now Switzerland or uh, Germany or England or whatever else. Uh, we are trying hard with other, uh, now we have the computers, we have uh, possibly, you know, this mathematical and so on, where is going uh, in the future science. So people with very sm small money, they can make possibly uh, very important contributions. So this is something now that uh, they have to see. It is not me, I'm not a politician, but uh, this has to be seen by politicians. Uh, in order to develop, but it has to be a program of uh, not even medium term, a long term program, 20 to 50 years to come, and it has not to change every time with uh, any government.
I don't want to go into politics, right? Yeah. But is uh, Germany having the best long-term plan in Europe? I will not say so, because uh, when we're speaking in the university in Zurich, it is uh, about uh, 30 years ahead, you know, or 50 years ahead. I was in England, in London, and was there how we are going to do the courses after 20 years. So I believe all countries, they have all these uh, very um, solid countries, they have long plans and so on. Uh, Greece, uh, as, I, as I said, it is a new country because, okay, it was... Um, free, let's say 150 years ago, it's not so long, and we have a lot of wars, and uh, Balkan wars, and uh, uh, civil war, and we have uh, dictatorship, and we have many things like that. Uh, it has to develop, people uh, in Greece are uh, really willing to, to go ahead, uh, and they are uh, going out, they are learning a lot, they are going to America, they are going to Germany, they are going to London. Uh, they're going to Japan even and so on. I found some Greeks there. So they're traveling everywhere and they like one day, you know, that uh, their country is, is uh, going to, to be one uh, prosperous uh, other countries in the world. And sorry, I don't want to go into politics, but that's the EU system of funding research. Is it a great success? Does it need a lot of improvement? For the EU, I, I cannot blame the EU for something. It is good for Greece and for Italy and for uh, some other Mediterranean countries because right now the most of the budget for research and so on uh, and development here is coming uh, for uh, projects that are coming from European community. So I cannot blame European community for this because I don't know how could exist Greece and uh, this. Uh, so uh, again, this is without any political... Uh, uh, tonality in this. I don't want to put any political, uh, but uh, yeah, the money that we're getting, we're getting a, a lot of money because, okay, people are doing well here in Greece, so the, the projects are com competitive, they're getting the money, and after they try to, lead by lead, to improve things uh, in Greece. Yeah. All right. Uh, does Switzerland work with the EU, or is it outside? It's outside. Uh, there, is, uh, there are some discussions if they have to join and so on. But uh, for uh, when we have, they are creating the groups. Yes, for research, uh, this that they are doing. Uh, the confederation is giving money to if a project is successful and you are applying with other groups of Switzerland, uh, of uh, Europe. They are giving you the money and you can realize together this project. Yeah. So, so there's it a lot is, of research. Yeah, there is, and you have uh, this. Uh, um, cooperations between uh, different countries, for instance, they have Switzerland, Croatia now is um, open, uh, Swiss Japan and so on. So you have these uh, uh, third, uh, third uh, countries as well as they call uh, um, less privileged, let's say. They have all these, yes.